So we looked at how to parameterize uh, a part of the of the internal combustion engine components, the moving components. So let us move to another kind of uh, equipment, the turbine. Uh, what's a turbine? A turbine can generate mechanical motion from a liquid such as water that flows under pressure. So once there's a liquid flowing under pressure, by proper arrangement, you can make a turbine generate mechanical motion. That mechanical motion contains energy and that energy can be used uh, to, to, to power an alternator and make electricity. So that motion can be turned using an appropriate alternator into electrical energy. It may also have other direct energy uses. So that's what a turbine does. And uh, a centrifugal pump can reverse this process. Use electricity, for example, to generate mechanical motion. Whereas the, uh, the uh, pump uses electricity to generate a mechanical motion, and this motion can now be used to do other things, like lifting water and uh, uh, increase the pressure of something and, and then pump things. So the next slide, the, 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 a, a turbine contains two types of uh, components, mainly a volute and an impeller. And you will see how a volute looks like here. This is what a volute looks like. The volute of an impeller is what we are looking at. Now. That is uh, what it looks like using this GIF. Now, what is really in this volute? You will see that the volute, uh, let me just go back and uh, see whether I can stop it. Uh, the volute, okay, uh, the thing is not stopping, but I will, let me just, I will show you. Uh, to make a volute, we need to see how to make the volute if you look at it very well. Making this requires several processes, starting with the drawing of each. And here, the center spiral used to create it from, is used to create it from two lots. As can be seen, the two pairs of concentric circles are on right, on right angle planes to the spiral, and the basic shape can be obtained via a double loft. First, to create the solid volute, the second, to create the volute cut through the former. Uh oh, I did, okay, this is what I'm talking about. You first of all have this spiral. You can see this spiral is like, uh, it's, it's almost like a circle, but maybe you have the it's radius here, and then you move. Uh, say 30 degrees, you have an increased radius. You move to 60 degrees, you have an increased radius. You move to 120 degrees, the radius keeps increasing as you are moving, so that at the end of the day, the line does not end where it started. When you have something like that, it's, like, it's called a spiral. This particular spiral is a linear spiral. Linear in the sense that there's a linear relationship between the radii and the angles. So. So a spiral doesn't have to be linear. You can have any functional relationship between it. It will still be a spiral, no matter what the functional relationship may be between the angle and the radii. But in this particular case, we are allowing there to be a uniform increase linearly a change in the angle. And then what you then do next is that you create, you create, uh, you create, a sketch plane that is perpendicular to the to the plane of the spiral. Now, if this is the xy, if this, this is the xy plane, this could be the yz plane or zx plane. And then here you allow one of the uh, you allow the beginning point to have two concentric circles, and you allow the end point to also have two concentric circles. Once you have that, you can easily do your volute uh, between those two spirals. And I think uh, because I didn't really show this uh, well on time, I want to actually do a demo of this in class. Let me see whether my Autodesk and my, my Vision 360 is fired up. Let's see if I have my volute loft. Okay, so this is the, this is actually the, this is the uh, spiral. Don't, I, I, don't ask me how I created it yet. I will tell you how I got it. Uh, this is this this thick line now is a spiral. Uh, admin, you can see my screen. Can you? So admin is not there. Uh, class, can is my screen clear? My, are you seeing my auto, my Fusion 360 screen? Um, okay, you are seeing it. Good, good, good. 
Okay, so what we are saying here is that you, you understand this spiral, and you can see that at the beginning point of the spiral, you have uh, two concentric circles. At the end of the spiral, you have larger concentric circles. We can do a loft. We can do a loft from, we can do a loft from uh, this. Okay, let us, let us uh, finish sketch and oh no, this is not what I wanted. Okay, this is, if, if I, if, if I, Allow, I wanted to show you only, I wanted to go step by step. Let me see whether I can do that again uh, without finishing the whole thing. Oh no, it will be difficult for me to do that now. No, 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 okay. Uh, another time you see it. But what we need to do is to begin a loft from, from the beginning or the end and, the, and then use the, center line as the guide rail and get here. If you do it that way, you get the volute, you get a volute that looks like this. So it is a spiral, but the one end is smaller than the other. That is the body of the centrifugal compressor or your turbine. That is one way it will look, but well, that is the most common way it will look. And, um, and then let us now go into the, so making this requires several processes, starting with the drawing of each. Here and here is the center of the spiral used to create it from two lots. That's what I've showed you. Uh, as can be seen, the two pairs of concentric circles are on right angle planes to the spiral and the basic shape can be obtained where a double lot. First to create the double lot, the first one creates a solid volute and the second one to create a volute cut through the former. So it, the second one will make use of the smaller of the two radii at the beginning and at the end, and a cut, a cut loft will be done on it. And uh, the initial challenge may come from the fact that the 3D modeling software may not directly support the creation of a spiral object. And um, so you cannot just create spiral. You can create a line, you can create a circle, you can create a rectangle, you can create a spline, but Fusion 360 does not have create a spiral. So what do you do? What do you do when you want a spiral and Fusion 360 does not allow you to? Well, one, you can create a spiral manually using splines by computing the location of some key points. So, and then you join those points with a sufficiently curved spline. That is one way to do it. Second way is to use a third party add-in or import it from another software. There can be another software. There are things that Fusion 360 cannot do that Autodesk Inventor, surprise, surprise, can do. And then does that mean that Autodesk Inventor is better than Fusion 360? Well, I leave you to judge whether you can make that conclusion. Remember that Fusion 360 and Autodesk Inventor are manufactured by the same company. And that uh, uh, Autodesk Inventor was manufactured 20 to 25 years earlier than Fusion 360 by the same company. So that should give you something to ponder. I will tell you that it doesn't mean anything. If you add the application programmer's interface they put in there where you can write Python program, you can create that loft programmatically. And once you create a parametric law, a parametric uh, 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 what is it, what am I calling it, a spiral, we do it only once and you just change parameters, you can get any spiral. So there are people selling software, selling add-ins in the Fusion 360 shop that you can buy their thing and use. But that's because you are not, you don't want to think. <laughs> you can do it yourself and sell. Why can't you do it yourself and be selling it to other people and be getting dollars right here in Lagos? It's, all, it's up to you. That's what the API programming that I'm teaching you can allow you to be able to do. So the attached starting line code creates a linear spiral. In this case, we allow the radius of the spiral to very linearly, it will linearly increase as the angular orientation. We may have technical reasons to change the way such center line is created. It's a matter of altering a single line of code to get any functional relationship of radius to angle we may want. And as a, and as a bonus, you can add, you can turn your Python scripts into add-ins to sell to other users who may not be ready to use this method, who may not be ready to think as much as you can think. After double loft, we create two simple plates to complete the volume. So let me just give you a, a look at the code. 
here is the, oh, I, I didn't even uh, use my slideshow yet. Let me just uh, to work. It out. So this is the, this is the important part of the program. This is the try part of the program. I did not go to the, the other part that uh, does error checking. So this is the essence of the code that is there. And if you look at this code, it, some of it may get familiar. If you have practiced the things I gave you, you know that you have to, you have to get the application to start with. And that app, that variable that you use, you name the application get as is the one that has the user interface and it's the one that you can put a message box you can ask, you can ask and answer questions. And then you can uh, do so many things with that app. You can see that after creating that app, everything from this line to this line to this line to this line, they are all about that app and the design is the active product. So from now on, it is that design that you are going to actually be addressing. In fact, and your root component, because every time you draw, there's a root component. Your, that design, there is a root component, there's a root component attribute of the active product, which is what you get at here. And once you get that, whether you are talking about your sketch, whether you are talking about your sketches, which has your sketch planes, or you are talking about your instructions, everything now is going to be registering with the root component, which is the, which is the, so for instance, now we can create the symmetric plane, symmetric plane, that is where we are going to do our, that's, that's where we are going to do our, uh, our line of increasing radar, which is what we call a spiral. So this is the same thing, this line 20 here is the same thing as, uh, create sketch and choosing the construction plane. So this is create. This is the same thing. This is equal to what you do when you are doing your GUI and you say create sketch and it says choose a plane. So that is it. So so once you have been able to navigate to your root component, which is the root component of the active product, which we call design. Remember that everything you have on the left hand side, all the rules of Python are obeyed. How about the left hand side as a variable is defined by the first assignment you, you use for it. So this design idea exists before, and it is actually referring to this uh, attribute of the app, and it is the root component, and that's what creates the root component. You know that in every one of your drawings, there is always a root component. And it's the plane that we're going to sketch on now, it is the root component sketches. So that means that everything, so you see that anytime we are going to create a plane, we are going to call the sketches attribute of the root component, and we are going to add a specific construction plane. Initially, they will just be uh, the coordinate construction plane, like this one is the XY construction plane. I'm sure you can see that there will be uh, a YZ construction plane, and then there will be uh, a, an XZ construction plane. All those ones will just be your coordinate planes. You will see later how to add other planes. All the things you are doing here, all you need to do, the ones that are not Python are have parallels to what you are doing in your GUI. So all you need to observe is what, what is the implication of this in your GUI. Once you know that and you know the syntax to use, at one time, you just continue with that. So, so the first 22 lines are just simple because the diameter here is, uh, uh, is just, that is just a value that we're going to use. So the next thing there, we are just setting all the things that we normally do in GUI, and these are the ways we do them. You cannot just, the, the points that we are going to create that will be visible on, the, on your drawing, the only way has, has to be created using a, a, a library called Autodesk Core, and there is an object collection called Create. That is what is good. That is what is like a container that you are going to be putting all your points. Any point put inside this container is a point that you will actually visually see inside your Autodex thing. After all of that, all this, after all of that, we, we choose Endring to be math time, uh, two times math pi. I want somebody to go to the chat room and tell me what we are doing in line 27. I want somebody to tell me what is happening in line 27. Look at line 27. Tell me what you think is happening there. What do you think is happening in line 27? 
Okay, we have multiplied two with pi. Why is there a math before pi? Why is there a math before it? What do you think two pi means? You see that on line 25, start range is zero, and on line 27, end range is two pi. Okay, okay, okay. We are creating a circle. No, we are not creating a circle. We are creating a, we are creating a spiral, but it is going to go, the spiral will also be 360 degrees, but because the, the radius at the beginning will not be the radius at the end, so, so we are specifying the degree. So you can see, you can see that what we are doing is transmitted. And it's, interestingly, <clears throat> by the time you do all those preliminaries, what where the engine room of this program is, is in this while loop. And you will see that it just it just parametrically creates all the points along the spiral. It's uh it, it takes the x, it it, 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 it creates the x coordinate and it creates the y coordinate. And if you look at it, you will see, for instance, the easiest way to see it is that, let us see what happens when it starts. Because when it starts, t is equal to start range, which is zero, plus end range minus start range times spline point times i. So if it is end range minus start range, this is uh, two pi over spline points. I mean, it's two pi over seven. 2 pi over 7, calculate how many degrees is that? 2 pi over 7 times i. First of all, remember that when i is 0, so this start range is just 0 because start range is 0. And whatever this results, so if i is 0, this still remains 0. So everything in the first t starts with 0. When t is 0, what will be the x coordinate? When t is 0, S coordinate is radius times zero. I say radius plus zero times math cos t. Y is radius plus zero times math sine t. So this is what it is this addition. If this were a circle, uh, if it was a circle we wanted to draw, if it was a circle we want to draw. Can you tell me what lines 35 and 36 would be if it was a circle we are trying to draw? I'm waiting for you in the chat room. Look at lines 35 and 36. If it was a circle we want to draw, what will this expression look like? No, 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 no. It will be rad only because the radius will always be constant. It will be radius cos t and radius sine t. So this, this it is, what makes what we are doing a spiral is this value we are adding at each iteration. Because you know that the, to calculate the value of t, the value of t is always increasing. So what we are adding to the radius is always increasing at each iteration. That is what turns this into, that's what turns it into um, a spiral. What we're adding, we're adding something to the radius. If we didn't add anything to the radius, if we just rub this off, we just rub this off and run the code again, you are going to get a perfect circle. But because we have added this parameter, it is this parameter that makes it a linear spiral. Linear spiral, not because it is a, a straight line, not because it's a straight line, but because the relationship between the increasing radius and the angle that pertains to is linear, the radius between the two. That is, so this here is the engine room of that your spiral. Now, you can do this spiral by doing this thing manually and picking those points one by one. I am sure if you did not believe in programming, 
before. You can see that whatever else you do, the person who writes this program would have done something easier than what you have done. So this is the this is one situation where if you are not just doing the GUI parameterization, grammatically creating the parameters, and that is how this one goes. So so you you go and uh, uh, I taught you last week or uh, last week or week before how to set up a typical uh, script. Just use this code now in the trial section of your script, and it will give you that spiral straight away. And in that, after you've got that spiral, you can actually now go to the perpendicular plane and create your two concert, two pairs of concentric circles and make. So if you try this, this is very simple, very simple. But if you understand this, you play around with it, you are beginning to program in earnest. And uh, using Python to create your graphics is one of the uh, best things for an engineering student to do because graphics is something you will do. And you now use your Python, you are learning Python, you are also improving, you are improving your graphics and Python concurrently and the two of them are helping each other. So this is, that's why I'm giving you this code, but I'm not giving it to you in a way where you can just go, you just go and type it in, initially type it in uh, uh, exactly. And then after you have understood, you can be changing some of my parameters and see how, for instance, I created my spine using seven points. You can just change this to 20 points and create your spine and see, we have spine and see. And then I am using, use the, with this T, I'm using, uh, a linear function to, to change from point to point. You can decide to use a non-linear function to change from point to point and see how your spiral will look like. So those are the things. So this one just creates that spiral, that's all. It doesn't even create the two pairs of circles at the beginning and at the end. So that is just one thing that uh, we, have, we have achieved here. So that is one way to improve your work there. So notice, that the engine room of the code is really the logic of the linear relationship of the spline as shown in line 33 to 38, creating the spline points. Once those spline points are created, remember that uh, the, this is the, the, what brings down those points into view and make them visible is the fact that the anything in this object collection, anything created in this object collection will be shown physically on your drawing in the locations that are the, because the, the points would be X, Y, Z coordinate points. And if you are on the X, Y plane, that means that all the Z coordinates are zero. So that is, is still an X, Y curve that you are drawing. And at the end of the day, and you this is where the uh, same plane, sketch curve, sketch fitted splines add spline points. So it carries all the, because each time here, you are creating, you are adding to the spline. You, you create the, line 24 creates the container that is going to contain the spline points. It creates the container. And then each time in the loop, you are adding the newly created point into that container. When your while loop is finished, then the thing will just go and empty that container onto your drawing and all the points that have been, that have been, uh, the point will just appear on your point. So this is actually the is a very, very nice thing to do. And by the time you understand this just, just this short code, I'm hoping that it will stimulate you to really want to code and to see that you can achieve a lot with it. I don't want to give you a heavy dose of code immediately. I just want you to enter it with uh, like the way a chicken enters a new land with one leg first until that leg is stays stable before it brings the second leg. And then after some time, when it's happy, it can now start scratching the ground. So that's what's, that's how I wanted to approach this matter. Okay, so that is, this is the, this is the code that creates the, the spiral. And it creates that spiral using seven points. Uh, so, so what do we do next? Now, this code from line 83 to 104, is what creates those two concentric, is what creates those two concentric circles. What I want you to see 
is uh, how how the uh, the game plane and the end plane, uh, uh, for instance, see the begin plane goes to the uh, sub component one which has been defined, the sketches, and you add XZ construction plane. You add the XZ construction plane, and then once you add that XZ construction, plane, that means that the things you are going to create are going to appear on that XZ construction plane, and that will be the beginning plane. The end plane is another exact construction plane. And let me explain this. This is one lines 84 here and 80 and 96. It's one specific example where writing the A is different from writing the GUI. If it was in GUI, you will use, you will not have a, like here, you have defined a beginning plane and an end plane. And let me tell you what that means. It means that even though in this figure, it appears as if this big uh, set of concentric circles and the small set of concentric circles, they appear to be on the same plane and they are on the same location. But logically to the API, the name of the plane where this appears is the end plane. The name of the plane where this appears is the beginning plane. And there are two different planes, even though they are located in one place. The uh, feature 360 does not have difficulty in creating two planes located at one, but it knows what objects, what lines are on one plane and distinguishes them from what lines are on the other plane. I want somebody to tell me why it may be reasonable not to put all of these four circles on one plane. Why would, why would I find it necessary to choose another plane when I'm using the API programming, Why I use two different planes? Can somebody suggest what could be the reason for that? Is that reasonable? And what could be the reason? Because if you are using the GUI, we may not worry. What could be, why am I choosing a beginning plane and I'm using another end plane? So that the start and end points of the spiral will be distinguished. Well, you are partially right. It is not completely wrong, but you have not hit the nail on the head. I mean, you tried. Anybody else will try? Why am I using two different planes? Because I, I created two different planes. And the things I created are exactly at the same location. Why am I using two different planes? Abib is the only person that has talked. OK, yeah, so many others are talking now. So we'll be able to sweep from one to the other. Even if they are on the same plane, you can sweep from one to the other because you just choose the objects. So that's not the reason. So the measurements won't intersect. No, that's not the reason. If two different planes are created, the spiral might disappear. That's not the reason. So that we can perform the pressure of each other. That's not the reason. Okay, when I get two more efforts, I will tell you why. I'm waiting for two more. So that the API can know where to start and where the start and the end place will be. No, that's not the reason. One more, one more before I tell you. Don't waste time now. Somebody should volunteer to say something before, so that I can quickly tell you the answer. Why is nobody trying to make the operation on the two? Different circles easy. Theophil loves are you are almost getting it. So that we can distinguish between the two set of circles is right. Chigoze Nandi. You see, when you are doing GUI, when you are doing GUI, you have your mouse, and when it says choose the beginning, beginning set of curves, you go and pick it with your mouse. When it says choose the end, you go and pick it with your mouse. If you are now writing a program, how do you tell it which one of them to pick? How do you tell it? But if you put them on two planes, and this is the only drawing on one plane, this is the only drawing on one plane, you can say, okay, go ahead and take the drawing on that plane. And then, what's, the, what's your beginning plane? Hey, go ahead and take the drawing on the beginning plane. What's your end plane? Hey, go ahead and take the drawing on the end plane. <laughs> That's, that makes it easy. That's the easiest way to specify. But, uh, let me ask you another question, which I don't expect you to want to, to get, but it is good 
it is good for us. But remember that the person who is doing GUI has an advantage because he has his mouse button, he's looking at it, and he can pick in answer to the loft. When the loft says, pick the... Okay, let us, let, let us go back to the code and let us just see what happens. Yeah, the, the, the splines, the, spline, the splines, which is the center point of the, the spline that is the center point of your volute. This is its name, SPL, because it is on, it is the, it, this is what receives the result of the curves that you sketched using those spline points. So we have this variable, so we can supply this variable to the loft. It asks us where is the guide rail. We can say that our guide rail is SPL because we have it. Now, when it says where is your start point, we can say that it is the drawing that is on the beginning plane. We, we, because we defined the beginning plane. Where did we define the beginning plane? Yes. Um, let me just see. Oh, no, it's not here. It's on the okay, it's on the next code. Okay. We define the beginning plane. Uh, we said the profile on the beginning plane is profile item zero because there are two profiles on the beginning plane and there are two profiles on the end plane. So we know that these are it, we know that these are the profiles on the beginning plane and these are the profiles on the end plane and they have names that you you have you have names. But because Fusion 360 does not guarantee that it will allow, it will arrange your your circles and the objects you place on your plane in any order. What, let me ask you a question. What data structure do you think it is using? If it is not arranging it in any order, let us say I throw three lines and four circles onto a plane, onto a sketch plane. And I'm telling you now that Fusion 360 API does not arrange them in any order. What, do, what data structure do you think it is using? Do you think it's using a list? Do you think it is using a dict? Do you think it is using a set? Or do you think it is using an array? Which one do you think it is using? It cannot be a list, Theophilus. Uh, Habib, there's nothing called array. Ebenezer, correct. It's using a set. It's using a set. It's using sets. So whatever you dump on a, a plane in your API are collected in sets. Because they are collected in sets, there is no guarantee as to which one comes before the other. So how do you now pick a particular thing when you are not seeing it? Because on your GUI, you are seeing that uh, drawing. So you can use your mouse to pick. How do you do it? Well, later on, when we are doing harder examples and we have to dump up to five or 10 things on the plane, I will show you that there are things that you, you can use some geometric attributes. For instance, in this particular case, we may then have to say, the, if we want to pick this one that is outside, outside, we can say the circle that has, that, that has the largest radius. If we, uh, Fusion 360 allows us to actually specify some geometric attributes. So this one now will be the circle that has the largest radius. This one will be the circle that has the smallest radius or smallest diameter on it. Or uh, this one is a circle that contains only one more circle. This is a circle that contains uh, two or this is a, so there are geometrical, so you, you are now left with geometrical properties, geometrical attributes to choose specific objects. But you can, you can obviate all of that pain by just creating few things on specific planes and there is no limit for you to create that. So there is, you, it doesn't cost you anything when you are programming to create fresh plane for things that you are going to use so that you, it is for you to avoid the ambiguity in selecting because if you want to select a particular cover, you go and select another curve, and you see that it's here, here you are going to draw. So that is the reason. So you are, we are, you are beginning to put yourself in the mindset of a programmer inside graphics. Now, I tell you, class, if you are not joined doing computer graphics and you are programming Python to get it done, you are moving your game to another level. 
In fact, you are no longer at the level of those who go to get certification. This is the reason. The certification is made for gen the general public. It's not assuming that somebody is currently studying engineering. But I can assume person in my class is studying engineering. So I can add fluid mechanics. I can add mathematics. I can add other things. Whereas the skill level required for the person doing general purpose Fusion 360 does not make any of those assumptions that I am able to make. That is why the way I will teach you will be to build on the things that are there for the people that are doing general certification so that we can move the game to another level. So just, so just mark that. And you will see this uh, programming Python to do parameterization programmatically is one aspect. And you will see some of the things we'll be able to do. And I, you can try. Do this thing uh, on the GUI and you can tell me the result. And when I tell you to change the relationship between the angle and the and the radius, and you see, you start all over again manually. But here, you just change parameters and you, you have a new volume. That is how simple it is. So let us move on. So we've now understood, so you can read some of these things and uh, you'll see how much you can do. Our ability to select parameters for the volume we want can easily be encoded into the Python code and can be the result of, dia uh, can be the results of dialogue with the user selecting relative sizes of the volute profiles, as well as the spiral geometry. I will try and do one of them for you so that you can see it at work. For instance, this is an example of, uh, an, you, we, uh, we've been talking about the volute. This is the impeller inside the volute. This is an example. This one, how many blades do you, do, can you find here? How many blades can you see here? How many blades can you see in this uh, impeller? Is this class still awake? Okay, thank God. Okay, so this impeller has five blades. Suppose you did an impeller with five blades. And after, next time I tell you to do an, another impeller, how many blades do you have in this impeller? How many blades here? Okay, seven. Uh, can you tell me, is there any other difference? between the two impellers, apart from the blades, apart from the number of blades. Can you tell me, is there any other difference? Is there any other difference, apart from the number of blades? Let me, sh let, let me show you the previous impeller, first of all. How the blades look. Okay. What about how they are oriented? Don't you see that one is bending forward, the other one is bending backwards? Can you see that one is bending forward and the other one is bending backwards? Can you see that? What if I put it to you that it is the same program that? Just change your parameters that created these two impellers. It's the same thing, the same code, the same drawing, both of them. This is the power of parameterization of, drawing, of your graphics using Python. It's the same code. I can put do another, I can do another impeller with 20 blades. And I can I can even do the impeller with straight edges and making them have angle zero. The same code, everything the same. This is the, you are beginning to see the power of parameterization gradually. I think before the end, if I have enough time, I will run the code for you. Okay. So the impeller contains several blades that are sweep directions, angular, uh, sweep directions, uh, angular directions, and inclinations. Here are two impellers geometries from the same parametric code. These three parameters, number of blades, sweep direction, and angular orientations are all different. The blades end in a parametric helix. Again, it's not directly supported by a sketch primitive in Fusion 360. The end of the blade is a parametric helix, and even the helix is not supported, but you will see 
we can write Python code than to create anything we want. So this poses no problem as this can be coded in Python just the way we did with the vote load spiral previously. Uh, okay, here, I see, let me run the code. I think we have uh, seven minutes to go. So let's see, let me just go to the Vision 360 and try and run the code. Uh, let's see, let me just start it. Uh, this is how I run the code. I can just, the code is, uh, I don't want, I, I am reluctant to show you the code because I don't want to discourage you. I'm just showing you just some few lines, but let me just, let me just show you the code. You are not babies. So script, let's look for the codes. Um, let's see, pump, LMNOP. These are all the Python programs that I've written over the several months and years. Let us just take a look at this. Okay. So you see, when I run the, it's asking me enter a radius. That's a parameter. Let me just accept that. Enter a sweep angle in radius, and zero to minus two. Let us accept what it's given, the default shift angle. Let's accept. And then we run it again. We will. Now, blades are seven. Let us make the blade 13. Let's make the blade 13 instead of, because we have seen five, we have seen seven. Let's make the blade starting. Spine of the volute. Okay, so blade thickness, let us accept everything else. Uh, height, asset. So you can see how radius and so on. So let's, let me just uh, switch up the volute. So you can see the, you can see this blade. You can see the same, same code, breathing, because we said, so, so you can count the number of blades here now. So I want to run it once more, and I want not to allow the sweep angle. I want to make the sweep angle zero. I want to see what will happen. Uh, what is it? Show us uh, to inspire us. You want, to, you want to see my code? Okay. Somebody says the code will not discourage him. It will inspire him. Okay, let me show you my code. Okay, so if I want to show you my code, I just, I can, I will still give you the code, but I'm not giving you immediately. I want you to, okay, first of all, you will see this 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 uh, helix here. Fusion 360 does not create this helix for you. So, but I use Python to create the helix, and I created it parametrically because the radius is variable, the angle of sweep is variable, and everything is variable. So, it is the same code that does all the sweep. Even those uh, blades that are not looking alike are created by the same parametric helix. So, so. But somebody wants to see the code. So let me just uh, let you see. It. I will, like I said, I'm going to give it to you eventually. So let's see. If you want to see the code, this is what you do. You go to the pump. This is new pump. The new pump 01. You click it here and you say edit. And it automatically fires the Visual Studio code. So this is the code. Uh, the first, this is the first part where you draw the volute, okay. Uh, this, this is far more involved in that, but I'm sure you can, you can recognize this, uh, this loop here that generates that your spine, that your, uh, that your spiral, this is it, generating the spiral there. And then this is the one that generated those two, those two uh, pairs of uh, concentric circles. This is what begins to loft to loft into it. And this is where the extrusion starts and then continues. And uh, the code, there is a medium sized code. Let me, I, do, I don't even remember how many lines this code is. Um, well, this is just about 500 lines of code that does everything, but that is not for you to worry about. What you have to worry about, can you do me that? Spiral. If you can do me that spiral, and I make you to do the two concentric circles, I will make you do these 500 lines. I can guarantee you. I've made many others together before you to do it. This code, let's see whether I have the date of its creation here. So it's not something that I, I've not even touched this code for some time. Okay. This code was uh, last edited. It was actually created three years ago. So it's not, it's not too old, but uh, that, um, that's a parameterized pump. And these are the kinds of things that you can do when we mix your graphics with your 
with your Python and with your mechanics and so many other things, mix all of them together. Once you are able to operate and be able to combine all of these things, you're already on your way to obtaining so many skills and uh, you are going to redefine yourself even in this Nigeria and maybe world. So that is uh, what I would say. Uh, let me just go back to the to my slides and uh, end this end to this class. Um, where are we? Okay. So but this is uh, this is the I, I I I did a cut through the volute now after the impeller has been put. It's what you see inside the inside the thing. This this what what you see as dash with dash sections there is a cut through the cutting the volute open to see and cutting through the impeller to see what's going on inside. Okay. Here is a section view of the volute and impeller with a part of the intake pipe. The parametric helicast splines, this is the parametric helicast splines that grease the blade edges, but the blade physics are shown in the dots that are joined by the spline. Blade shapes, angular orientation sizes are all parametrized and can be given by the user to construct the turbine for scenario analysis in a computational free dynamic software. And this is, uh, I just did a GIF. I don't did a GIF of it for you to see everything. So you can look at it from the inlet, you can look at it from the outlet, and you can see how the section is created. This is how I created the section through it. Okay, so the section goes like that, and goes like that, cut through it. And then you can now orient and you rotate it again and see it from another side. Um, so that is the GIF, and that is how I'm ending today's class. I will give you more of this, but class, what are you going to do between now and next class? Play with the code I've given you. Create the spline. Just create that spline. I gave you the complete code to create the spline, but remember, you must know how to start up uh, a script for yourself and replace the created code for yourself by the code that I've given you. You have to type everything in correctly. It will run and create that. Once you can create that, I'll show you how to create the two pairs of lines, how to uh, loft them together and create your volume. Once you have done that, you're already on your way. And you are going to do, you are between now and the six months time, you will, you will be a wonderment to yourself as to the things you can do with a combination of Python and uh, Fusion 360. You remember when I was teaching you Python last year, I insisted you must, uh, last, uh, last year, I insisted you must use uh, Visual Studio Code. We have got to the reason. The reason is that Visual Studio Code is the only uh, programming environment recognized by Fusion 360 for you to do your editing of your code. In. And that's why I was thinking of when you will use this for Fusion 360. I think we will end there today, but don't forget, don't just hear what we have done today. Make sure you can do at least this plan before the next lecture and some other things. So it's already past our time. I want to wish you uh, a good week. So it is bye for now. <laughs>